<laughs> Off we go. All right. All right, everybody. Welcome to our Very reading good. of Zoolander. I'm super excited to be able to do this amazing, fun comedy. I'm Jessica. I'm going to be playing the role of Mugatu. Um, today, our cast of characters, we have Logan, who's going to be playing J.P. Pruitt. Uh, Anne has a variety of roles as well. She's going to be, probably the bigger name on that is Katinka. Uh, Jeremy. Uh, just yeah. Uh, no, Jeremy, yeah. <laughs> Jeremy is going to be our scene description. He's also going to be playing our Maury Ballstein. Uh, we have Aaron <laughs> A. a Ron. He's going to be playing the role of Matilda. We have Angie, <laughs> right down over there. Uh, Angie's gonna be playing a variety of roles. My favorite one she's gonna be playing is the Prime Minister of Malaysia. She'll also be playing Brent, one of Derek's roommates, along with some others. Um, we have Curtis. Curtis is gonna be playing the role of Todd, uh, David Bowie, and Mikas, my future husband, Alexander Skarsgård. <laughs> Matt, down there, you're gonna be playing Hansel. And of course, Derek Zoolander will be played by the one and only Joe Taft, Minnesota Joe. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I think we're about ready. You guys ready? Yeah. yeah. Nope. All right, yeah, Jeremy, yeah. go ahead and take it away. Yes. Zoolander, written by Jessica Ash. <laughs> <laughs> open on news footage of a huge crowd in Malaysia cheering and celebrating. Here in Malaysia, this is an almost overwhelming sense of euphoria as newly elected prime minister has given this impoverished nation the gift of hope, promising to raise the substandard minimum wage and end child labor once and for all. News footage shows the new prime minister of Malaysia giving a speech and the crowd goes wild with cheering, waving banners and releasing balloons in elation. Already considered a living saint, he has become this small country's greatest hope for a thriving future in the new millennium. The crowds march, carrying banners with the Prime Minister's portrait on them. Interior secret underground base continuous, a hand slams a red button, ending the news footage. A table sits in a dark room, various undressed mannequins are seen in the corners of the room. Five figures, three men and two women, sit in the shadow at the table. A screen with the news projection whips up to the ceiling behind them. Ah, get closer, Jacob. Close up on the first man. This is disgusting. How could you let this happen? We see Mugatu from behind. His hair is bleach blonde and designed in an avant-garde work of art. I've negotiated my butt off, Giorgio. I've tried bribes, I've tried gifts. I even sent him some pet oxen. I mean, they love that crap in Malaysia, but he won't budge. Oh, listen, 50% of my inventory is manufactured in sweatshops on the Malaysian border. Something has got to be done. Malaysia goes, what is next? My entire panty line is made in Vietnam. We'll all go bankrupt within a year. The Malaysian must be eliminated, Mugachi. Man number three whips open an ornate black lace fan in a dramatic fashion in front of his face. What? Mugatu sits in the shadow, you, holding you a small white dog. Mugatu. This fur matching Mugatu's hair and style and color. Yeah. No, I don't have time for this. Perhaps you'd rather go back to churning out novelty necklaces in Hackensack. But my new fall line is almost due. And I trust you would like to live to see your spring line as well. Close up on Mugatu's dog, he whimpers and fidgets. Malaysian Prime Minister visits New York in 14 days. Do it then. The man takes a drag of a cigarette. 14 days? That's fashion week. It's impossible. I have a show. <laughs> it's perfect. Right. To be your guest of honor. That's not enough time. It takes months to recruit and train an operative. What about Fabio? Hmm? Oh. Too smart. This is a rush job. He's got to be extremely dim witted. You a beautiful, self absorbed simpleton who can be manipulated and molded like jello. Or cookie dough. Or, or any kind of dough. 
point is, we in an empty vessel, a shallow, dumb, vacacious moron. And when he's finished, we'll just But who? I mean, where in all of God's green goodness am I going to find someone that beef-headed? Interior room day. A photo shoot is in place. Photographers, customers, and assistants are buzz as they busy themselves to complete their work. Derek, I just have a few more questions, if that's okay. Matilda, a beautiful young journalist, stands behind a busy makeup team. Derek, a good-looking, like, really, really ridiculously good-looking <laughs> man, sits in the chair being, pr being primped by the team. Cool. <laughs> so, when did you know you wanted to be a model? Derek answers all while the makeup team is busy preparing his face for the photo shoot. Hmm. It would have been the first time I... I went through the second grade. Matilda tries to stay out of the way as co costumers wheel... Oh, cost wheel racks in front of her and the makeup team prevent her from getting too close to Derek while they prepare him. Matilda writes notes, trying to keep up with this vapid, with his vapid answers. I caught my reflection in a spoon while I was eating my cereal, and I remember thinking, wow, you're ridiculously good looking. Maybe you could do that for a career. Do what? Be professionally good looking. Right. Uh, what would you say your trademark is, if you have one? Well, I guess the look I'm best known for is Luke Steele. What's that look like? Derek whips around in a seat, finally looking at her with a smoldering look and pouty mouth. Matilda nods in tolerant acknowledgement. You go in. Derek smiles. That, oh. That's impressive. <laughs> <laughs> Derek smiles smugly. And there's Ferrari and the Tigre. The Tigre is a lot softer. It's a bit more of a catalog look. I use it for footwear sometimes. Can I see that? <laughs> he whips around and gives her the exact same look that Blue Steel was. Like, the exact same. <laughs> Matilda softly shakes her head, trying to mask her confusion. Opening credits, New York City. Exterior Fashion Awards red carpet night. The place is crammed with paparazzi and entertainment news reporters as they photograph and interview celebrities on the red carpet. Look, Derek Zoolander, without Derek Zoolander, male, male modeling wouldn't be what it is today, plain and simple. Cut through various interviews about Derek from very famous people. I'm Victoria Beckham, Beckham and he is a fashion icon. Intercut between the red carpet and the photo shoot with Derek and Matilda. So, do you spend a lot of time working on these looks, thinking about them? Oh, sure. I've been working on Magnum <clears throat> for at least the last eight or nine years. Oh, Magnum. That's intriguing. <laughs> Can I see that? <laughs> Derek scuffs. <laughs> you I shouldn't even be talking about it. It's nowhere near ready. Back to red carpet. I'm Christian Slater, man. It's almost like it's like a <laughs> light around him. He exudes beauty. I think about Derek every time I design a collection. Back to photo shoot. Uh, Derek, <laughs> I don't know if you're familiar with the belief that some aboriginal tribes hold. Derek gives her a pouty look while being print. It's the concept that a photo might steal a part of your soul. What are your thoughts on that as someone who gets his picture taken for a living? Exterior New York street night. A black limo drives down the busy street. It passes by a large L'Oreal billboard featuring Derek model three different hair colors, all with the same expression on his face. That blue steel look he does, oh my god, is that the style and the, the hair? Back to red carpet, photo shoot intercut. You know, it's almost like a new afro for the, the white man, but it's beautiful. Back to photo shoot, Derek seems a bit perturbed by Matilda's question. Well, I guess I would have to answer your question with another question. Matilda looks at him, curious. How many Abo Digitals do you see modeling? He gives her a bounty blue steel look. Exterior red carpet night, a huge crowd of protesters are outside of the red carpet entrances, many holding signs protesting against child labor and supporting the new Malaysian prime minister. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the fashion industry's biggest awards in the night. It's the VH1 Fashion Awards.
The black limo pulls up, and Derek, dressed in a fashionable suit, exits onto the red carpet. Pouty, look, Intel. There he is. Oh, my God. Three-time male model of the year, Derek Zoolander! Derek walks the red carpet, stopping and posing for shouting paparazzi at the right moments before ca- continuing his walk down the carpet. Reporters to continue to ask celebrities about Derek, intercut between Derek on the red carpet and interviews. He's like music. Back to Derek. Derek hams it up for the photographers. Proud owner of Blue Steel, the look that made him the legend he is today. Back to interviews. He's almost too good looking. Back to Derek. Hey, Paco. Back to interviews. (laughs) That would be the main deterrent, considering our relationship. Exterior red carpet entrance. Meanwhile, Hansel, a young, beautiful male model, rises up to the red carpet entrance on a Razor scooter wearing... look and lands on the carpet wind blowing through his hair he performs a few swinging tricks with the scooter before folding it up and putting it away he's wicked cool and that's who Derek and that's who Derek Zoolander is defending his title against tonight Hansel the paparazzi go nuts for Hansel screaming his name desperate for the perfect shot all right all right all right <laughs> the rookie sensei- <clears throat> Excuse me. The rookie sensation who has burned his way into the eye sockets of fashion world and left them clawing their faces for more. Hansel pulls out a yo-yo and starts playing with it and performing tricks on the carpet. He's too cool to even care about the red carpet. He's frankly bored. Exterior red carpet continuous. A group of protesters are angrily waving signs against Mugatu. Mugatu sucks! Support Prime Minister Mugato uses slave labor. Exterior red carpet entrance. Meanwhile, Katinka, a beautiful but scary woman, exits a limo wearing a red fringed embroidered dress. Mugato exits the limo behind her wearing a bedazzled red cowboy looking outfit and holding his dog close. He want, he whines at the protesters. <sighs> Down with Mugato. Oh, you hate to see something like that at an event like this. Ugly protesters bothering beautiful people. Mugatu whines uncomfortably again at the signs from the protesters. Uh, There's no denying Jacoba Magatu has been accused of exploiting cheap Malaysian workers in order to make his, the most of his garment industries close. Mugatu tries to distract the photographers with his dog's matching red cowboy outfit. Oh. Back to Derek, who has made his way with, with the main event announcer. Derek, Derek. Hey, Steve. How are you doing? They shake hands. Yeah. Derek, smiling. You're going for your fourth straight male model of the year award tonight. Come on, are you nervous? Well, there are a couple little butterflies in my basket, but I think I'm doing okay. (laughs) We also hear you're working on a new look. Can you tell us about it? Actually, I can't, Steve, because it's not yet perfected. But I can tell you that it's called Magnum and... Shut up, baby. Shut, shut. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, Derek turns the voice and reveals Maury Ballstein, his manager, an older man wearing a shiny brown tracksuit, accompanied by a beautiful young woman in a matching brown slinky outfit. If I tell you anything else, this guy's going to kill me. Got that right. How you doing, Steven? Maury Ballstein, Balls Models. A man who needs no introduction, Maury. You've handled every important male model for the last 30 years. Derek's chances tonight? Let me tell you something. Nobody can touch Derek. Nobody. I got to get inside. I'm schwitzing like a schmedrick with all these lights. Derek, smiling, turns and looks around at all the cheering photographers. His smile quickly fades as Hansel approaches. They have a stare down, both with pouty model looks on their faces. Curtis, I think that's you. Derek, Derek. Derek snaps out of it and looks at the reporter. Are you worried about Hansel? Uh, Gives a cocky look. Not as much as I'm worried about Gretel. He spots Matilda in the crowd of reporters. Hey, put that Hansel and Gretel line in your article. I want people to know how funny I can be. (laughs) <laughs> oh, believe me, they'll know. It'll hit newsstands tomorrow. Her attention is pulled somewhere else. 
Excuse me, Mr. Magatu. Mr. Magatu, Matilda Jeffries, Time Magazine. Magatu walks the red carpet, ignoring the serious protesters, reporter, like Matilda. Any comment on Prime Minister Hassan's wage increases for Malaysian garment workers? Magatu rolls his eyes, exasperated. No, he has no comments. Why don't you let him speak for himself? Isn't it true you'd like to see the Prime Minister out of power so you can continue exploiting cheap Malaysian labor? Hey, Mugatu! Mugatu turns around to see a protester on the red carpet. Screw you <laughs> and your little dog, too! She throws an egg at him. Look out! She's got an egg! The egg hits and shatters on his dog. Mugatu is hysterical as he's oh! at his party inside the venue. Security manhandles the protester while Matilda smiles softly. Let go of me! Interior fashion awards later, Fabio accepts an award on stage. <laughs> yes, yes. Wow. I just can't tell you how much this means to me, to be the first recipient of this beautiful award. Ugatu leans forward in his seat to whisper into the ear of the man sitting in front of him, Maury Balstein. We have a serious problem on our hands, Maury. This Malaysian thing is getting out of hand. I hear you, Jocko. Back on stage. Uh, <clears throat> what this, the slashy, means is you consider me the best actor slash model and not the other way around. Back to audience, Derek rolls his eyes and claps his hands, clearly bored. Mugatu still whispers to Mori. His proposed wage increase could ruin all of us. I need it taken care of soon. I have people to answer to. Back on stage, Lenny Kravitz approaches the microphone. All right, now to the important stuff. These ain't no slashes, folks. These are the pure breeds. Back to audience. Hansel sits next to Gwen Stefani and Gavin Rosedale, playing with his yo-yo. Rostin. Here are the nominees for Male Model of the Year. A video package of Hansel starts to play on the stage screen. Young, hot, brash, with more covers in his first year than any rookie model ever, and an attitude that says, who cares? It's only fashion. Back to audience, Bugatu leans over to Katinka. That Hansel's so hot right now. Back to video pack. <laughs> you're muted. Pat, we can't hear you. Pat, you're muted. <laughs> okay, cool, here we go. I hear a lot of words like beauty and handsomeness and incredibly chiseled features. To me, that's like a vanity, a self-absorption that I'd like to steer clear of. The video package cuts to footage of Hansel bungee jumping. I dig the bungee. I mean, for me, it's just the way I live my life. I grip it and I rip it. I live with a lot of flair. I live on the edge. It's where I got to be. I wouldn't like any other kid, you know, who dreams about being an astronaut. I was always more interested in what bark was made out of on a tree. Derek, clear, clear, clearing, clearly bored, is acting bratty in the audience while watching Hansel's video package. Richard Gere's a real, a real hero of mine. Sting. Thing would be another person who's a hero. The music that he's created over the years, I don't really listen to it, but the fact that he's making it, I respect that. I care desperately about what I do. I know what product I'm selling. No. Do I know what I'm doing today? No, but I'm here and I'm gonna give it my best shot. Hansel. The crowd goes wild, screaming and cheering after the package completes. The next video package starts. Photos and footage of Derek flash on the screen. Over the past decade, male modeling has had a shadow cast over it by one man and five syllables. Dare Ick Zoolander. Darren counts out the syllables on his fingers, looking perplexed. Modeling to me isn't just about being good looking or having a lot of fun and being really, really good looking. Derek in the audience is really feeling himself, nodding his head to everything his own voiceover is saying in his video package. Commercials, Derek's done, play out on screen. Behind the scene footage from different photo shoots. 12 months of Derek giving the same facial expression, but wearing different colored shirts with different backgrounds, barely visible behind him. The calendar was great because it gave me, it gave people a chance to see a side of my versatility. The original Greek word for the model means mishap and ball of clay. And I try to think about that every time I get in front of a camera. Three-time male model of the year, Derek Zoolander. The crowd cheers and screams as the package comes to a close. Derek smiles. Hansel nods his head in approval as he continues playing with his yo-yo on stage. And the award goes to Hansel. 
A split screen shows Hansel on one side and Derek on the other. Hansel cheers in happiness while Derek pumps his fist in victory, kisses the audience member beside him and gets up from his seat. Hansel hugs Gwen Stefani and then sees Derek making his way to the stage. Hansel is clearly confused. The audience is also confused as a happy, confident Derek makes his way up to the stage. Lenny Kravitz looks around in confusion as Derek approaches. Derek hugs Lenny. Lenny just looks at him as if Derek takes as Derek takes the podium. Thank you, Lenny. Hansel walks up to the steps of the stage and watches Derek at the podium. Derek holds the award with an uncomfortable Lenny Kravitz and Hansel standing behind him. Wow. You know, a lot of people said winning this award four years in a row couldn't happen. Donatella Versace covers her face in embarrassment in the audience. Well, I guess I showed. Lenny Kravitz taps his arm, stopping him. He whispers something into Derek's ear. Maury slaps his head in his hands. I. The realization slowly comes over Derek, still clutching the award. He turns and sees the huge screen with Hansel's face that flashes winner across it with the Hansel standing right below it. Hansel can't even make eye contact with Derek. Lugatu leans forward and whispers into Maury's ear, his hands still holding his face in embarrassment. I think we found our solution, Ballstein. Maury lowers his hands. No, not Derek. He's perfect and you know it. Now make it happen. Derek looks around at the audience, mortified. Oi, it stings me like a fissure in my And You're right, he's, he's ready. Exterior award show venue back moments later. Derek exits out the back door and makes his way to the sidewalk. Camera's flashing the whole way. He sees his reflection in the puddle at the curb. He stares at it. He kneels down, staring intently at himself. He touches the water and ripples, and it ripples his reflection in a very Lion King type way. Who am I? His reflection shrugs. I don't know. A racing car splashes the dirty water into Derek's face. Hansel scoots by on his scooter with a girl clinging to him on his back. Hey, the results are in, amigo. What's left to ponder? Woo! Scoots off. Derek struggles to come up with a witty retort. He laughs in the distance. Exterior Times Square night, Derek walks the street, face money and downcast. He looks up and sees himself on, the, on an advertisement. It's quickly covered up by a banner of a shirtless Hansel that reads, Male Model of the Year. Derek looks over and sees a projection of him on stage with Lenny Kravitz with the headline, Confused Loser Zoolander Tries to Steal a War. He looks down at the ground, sad. Exterior New York street night, Derek walks on the empty streets. He makes his way into his apartment, super bummed. Interior apartment moments later, he has a giant spoon sculpture in the entryway that he looks into. He sees... He's his upside down dirty face warped by the spoon. Bedroom, Derek climbs into one of the, du the bunk beds. His three roommates asleep in their spots. He lies back, a single tear falling from his eye. Apartment morning, Rufus works out in the living room. Brent sits looking at two phones. Derek in penguin footy PJs looks at himself obviously with a spoon and Mikas, originally played by the love of Jessica Ash's life, nice, prepares a smoothie <laughs> in the kitchen. Ugh, I can't stand Hansel. You no, know, right? Laying on an excursion, like he's so cool. And the way Hansel combs his hair. Or like, doesn't, is like, excuse me, but have you ever heard of styling Joe? He laughs at his own joke. Brent looks offensive. <laughs> he puts down the two cell phones he had on both ears. I'm sure Hansel's heard of styling Joe. He is a male model. Mika's puts his hand to his ear. Uh, Earth to Brent. I was making a joke. Earth to Mikas, duh, okay, I knew that. Uh, Earth to Brent, I'm not so sure you did because you all, well, I'm sure he's had him styling gel like you didn't know the joke. <laughs> he points his finger at Brent in a playful, victorious fashion. I knew it was a joke, Mikas, I just didn't get it right away. Brent gets in Mikas' face, a fight about to ensue. Mikas puts his hand on his wonderful Swedish hips. Uh, Earth to Brent. You could stop it already? They look to Derek. Both Brent and Mikas have pouty model looks on their face. Rufus stops working out, striking a model look to pay attention to the conversation. Do you ever think that maybe there's more to life than being really, really ridiculously good looking? He strikes a blue steel look. Rufus contemplates. I mean, maybe we should be doing something more meaningful with our lives, like helping people. Uh, Derek, what people? I don't know. People who need help. 
Rufus gets up from his workout equipment and joins the others in the kitchen. Models help people. They make them feel good about themselves. You also show them how to dress cool and wear their hair in interesting ways. Yeah. I guess so. You know what could really help you sort through these important issues? What? Orange, Orange mocha, mocha frappuccino. They all laugh joyously. Derek smiles in a knowing way. Yeah. Come on, man. Come on. Wake me up before you go. <laughs> Leave me hanging out. Hello. Plays. Exterior New York Street later. As the song plays, Derek drives a Jeep recklessly as they all sip, laugh, and dance crazily. Carefree, best buds. Exterior gas station. Derek pulls up to a pump. The roomie's still dancing and having fun. Derek washes the windshield while Brent fills up with the gas pump. Derek playfully sprays Rufus with water from the, from the squeegee. Rufus gets out of the car and grabs another squeegee. A water fight, very commercial-like, ensues. All four men are whipping water at each other with squeegees, while two male gas at station attendants look on, shaking their heads in judgment. Derek puts his squeegee away, something catching his eye. He sees a man holding a Time magazine. Derek on the cover, he throws it away. Derek makes his way over to the trash can and picks up the magazine. Meanwhile, Brent grabs the gas pump from the car and starts spraying Mikas and Rufus with the gasoline playfully. Derek lifts up his water-speckled sunglasses to get a better look at himself on the magazine. Derek on the magazine smiles and points at his chest. The emblem? I'm with stupid. And an arrow points up to Derek's smiling face. Derek Zoolander, a model idiot. He frowns and turns back to his friends, all spraying each other in the car with gasoline and laughing and whooping, whooping, whoop. Derek smiles <laughs> at his friends, having such a great time. Brent jumps off the car and puts something in his mouth, a cigarette. Derek smiles, turns to concern as Brent turns, bringing a lighter to his mouth. He lights it. Brent! Huh? No! The gas station, along with the cars and bottles, explodes. Exterior cemetery day. Three beautifully adorned black caskets lie side by side. A huge crowd of fashion industry elite has come out to honor the memories of Brent, Rufus, and Mikas. Derek, dressed in a high fashion all white outfit, delivers the eulogy from a podium in front of the caskets of crowd. Rufus, Brent, and Mikas were like brothers to me. And when I say brother, I don't mean like an actual brother, but like how black people use it, which I think is more meaningful. If there's anything, that's horrible tra that this horrible tragedy can teach us, it's that a male model's life is a precious, precious commodity. Just because we have chiseled abs and stunning features, it doesn't mean that we too can't die in a freak gasoline fight accident. Away from the funeral, the graveyard attendant puts down a shovel and looks on to the large gathering. So today, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to take this opportunity to announce my retire. A DJ starts playing loud fashion show type music, Hansel's theme song, from a DJ booth that seems to have appeared from nowhere. Hansel arrives with his entourage at the funeral, drawing the attention of those in attendance away from Derek. Mugatu turns to his assistant, Todd. Hansel, he's so hot right now, Hansel. His assistant nods in amazed agreement. I would like to take this up or Hansel finds a seat and takes the whole crowd buzzing about his presence. Oh my God, I can't believe Hansel's here. People. So he bangs on the podium. The music winds to a stop and everyone quiets down. I'd like to announce my retirement from the male modeling profession. Everyone gasped. The, this grabs even Hansel's attention. What? I'm pretty sure there's a lot more to life than being really, really good looking. And I plan on finding out what that is. Thank you. He leaves the podium, exterior cemetery later. The funeral attendees are leaving. Matilda waits outside next to security officers waiting to pounce for questions. Uh, Mr. Magatu, Mr. Magatu. Mr. Magatu exits with his entourage, his nose in the air, ignoring <laughs> Matilda. Um. <laughs> I can't see the line. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if I could just have a moment of your time, please, sir. Mugatu hums negative at her, talking behind his team as much as he can. 
just just one minute of your time, please, sir. Mm-mm. Derek mm. brushes right past her. She looks at him in recognition. Derek? He follows him. Derek, hey. What do you want? Actually, I'm trying to talk to Magatu, but he's tougher to get than the president. Oh, I thought you were going to tell me what a bad Googleizer I am. A, a what? A Googleizer. When you speak at funerals? He takes his sunglasses off and looks at her in anger. Or did you think that too stupid to know what a Googleizer was? Matilda clears her throat, trying not to laugh right in his beautiful face. Those about me. Look, Derek, my editor put that headline on it, okay? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I know it came off kind of harsh. Yeah, yeah, well, fortunately for you. Not too many people I know read your little time magazine or whatever it's called. Look, maybe you could do me a favor. All I'm trying to do is get some background information on Mugatu. Mugatu? If you knew anything, you know, you know Magatu's the one designer who's never hired me. Come on. There's got to be some... Sorry, lady. He puts his sunglasses back on. Not interested. Now, excuse me. I've got an after-funeral party to attend. He gets into his car. It drives off. Interior hallway. Balls. Models agency. Derek and Maury walk down the hallway together. Go back home. You're overreacting. I want to do something meaningful with my life, Mari. I have deeper thoughts in my mind. The other day, I was thinking invo- about volunteering to help teach underprivileged children to learn how to read. And just thinking that, just thinking about it, was the most rewarding experience I've ever had. Mari signs paperwork and assistance hand, that assistance hand to him. He hands it back. Derek, I don't think you're cut out for that kind of thing. I mean, maybe. I could even have my own institute. We could all we could call it the Derek Zoolander Center for Kids Who Can't Read Good. What about us? We built this place together. Look out, Tushy Squeeze. <laughs> he grabs. <him. laughs> I don't remember this. He grabs his <laughs> his ass in passing. She gasps and squeals. Maury. I know, it's wrong. Derek, when I met you, you were a junior petite who couldn't book a goddamn Sears catalog and who couldn't turn left to save his ass. Now look at you. I can turn left. Maury turns left down a hall. Derek turns right, turns a whole circle and makes his way down the same hallway. Yeah, right. Interior Maury's office continuous. The two walk into Maury's office. Derek, please, some male models go left at the end of a runway. Others go right. You got a lot of gifts but hanging a Louis just isn't one of them. He sits behind his desk. Sit down. Derek sits in one of the chairs in front of Maury's desk. Hey, I want you to hear some great news. He hums a loud fanfare tune. Mugatu wants you for his new campaign. Didn't you hear me, Murray? I just retired. But this is Mugatu, Derek. Right now, this guy is so hot, he can take a crap, wrap it in tinfoil, Put a couple of fish hooks on it and sell it to Queen Elizabeth as earrings. Derek looks at him in disgust. Derek, you're the laughing stock of this entire fashion world. He told, holds up the Time Magazine article on Derek. Derek furrows his eyebrows and pouts. What do we, what do we do when we fall off the horse? Derek contemplates this, clearly thinking hard for a couple off beats, a couple of beats, but not having the answer come to him. Maury shakes his head. We get back on. Sorry, Maury. I'm not a gymnast. Maury's jaw drops. What? Derek gets up and walks over to the door before turning back to Maury. I'm going back home. I need to get in touch with my roots. Figure out who I am. See you around, Maury. Derek leaves. Maury rests his head in his hand. Oi. Exterior coal mining country, southern New Jersey day. Derek walks on a mountain path in a very fashion-forward outfit, carrying his designer luggage. He approaches a mining entrance, numerous tired and dirty men walking towards the entrance. Hey, Pop. Three men turn around, Larry, Luke, and Scrappy. They may not share Derek's great looks, but they all have the signature black, full-styled Zoolander hair. They look at Derek, indifferent to his presence. It's me. 
Scrappy Luke, you remember your brother, right? Derek sticks out like a sore thumb in, this, in his gar- garish outfit in a sea of blue-collar workers. What do you want? Derek approaches them. I thought maybe I could work the mines with you guys. You know, all the Zoolander men together again? Like when we were kids? Times have changed, boy. You wouldn't last one day down there in those coal mines. Can't you even pretend to be happy to see me, Pop? Damn it, Derek. I'm a coal miner, not a professional film and television actor. Do us all a favor and get out of here. Larry, Luke, and Scrappy turn and walk towards the mine entrance. Pop, wait, please. Larry turns back to him. Give me a chance. I won't let you down, I promise. Interior Mugatu Design Space Day. Posters advertising Mugatu's canine clothing line grace the walls. Mugatu is tailoring dress on a model. Hold very still. Very still. I'm working right now. This. He sticks over the pin. Ow. Oh, I'm sorry. Did my pin get in the way of your ass? Do me a favor and lose five pounds immediately or get out of my building like now. He looks at him afraid. Get out! He leaves. I'm so tired. Todd approaches with the phone. No, Todd, not now. He holds the phone out to Mugatu. It's boring. Mugatu takes the phone. Tell me something good. Intercut between Mori's office and Mugatu's design space. You may have to start looking for someone else. There is no one else. The show is in 10 days, Ballstein. Jocko, I hear you, but the kid's mixed up. He went home. He's talking about going off to ponder and tutoring underprivileged idiots or some shit. I don't care what it takes. Get him back. We're running out of time. Capiche? Yeah, I capiche. Now if I could only capiss, my prostate's flaring up like a freaking tiki torch. God whose face turns to disgust. Give me a little pee-pee. Come on. A couple drops. <laughs> he starts to pee. Mugatu can hear it over the phone. His disgust deepens. That's what I'm talking about! Interior coal mine day. A montage ensues of Derek's day in the coal mine set to everybody's working for the weekend by Loverboy. While the men work, Derek has turned the mines into his own personal playground catwalk. Montage. Derek lifts a pickaxe and swings it behind him. Slips right out of his hands and off screen hitting a worker. They scream. Scrappy puts an extremely heavy block of rock into the Minecraft. Breathing heavily, Derek throws a small <coughs> hand of rock into the cart, grunting with effort and whines. There he goes to swing a pickaxe at the wall. Derek pops out from the wall with black makeup and clothing. Surprise! Larry falls back, gasping. He stands back up. Scrappy helps him but put his, to put his headlamp back on. What the hell's the matter with you? Interior bathroom, the mine shaft bar at night. Derek cleans up the last of his makeup with a small cotton ball, completely black from the makeup. He throws it in the trash, overflowing with all the used small cotton balls he used to clean himself up. Interior main room, the mine shaft bar moments later. Larry, Luke, and Scrappy watch a football game from the bar. Derek approaches and sits next to Larry. He looks up at the game. Who's winning the match? Luke looks away in disbelief. Larry doesn't break his eye contact with the screen. Steve. Derek lets out a weak cough, like seriously, a bitch-ass cough as, as he sits next to Larry at the bar. <laughs> I think I'm getting the black lung pop. It's not very well ventilated down there. He sips from a fruity cocktail while the others drink glasses of beer. For Christ's sake, Derek, you've been down there one day. Talk to me in 30 years. Luke and Scrappy look at each other. Can you believe this guy? On the TV, a commercial comes up. It shows a mermaid, merman Derek swimming in blue water. Derek watches proudly. His brothers and fathers look beyond embarrassed. Merman Derek swims right up to the camera. He smolders into the camera. Moisture is the essence of wetness. And wetness is the essence of beauty. He swims away. Older weathered men in the bar laugh hysterically at the commercial. Derek looks down a bit embarrassed at this reaction. Larry looks at him. Why'd you have to come back to this damn town? He stands up and turns to walk away. I wanted to make a new life for myself. Derek gets up and walks to his father. I'm sorry I was born with this perfect bone structure. That my hair looks better done up with gel and mousse than hidden under a stupid hat with a little light on it. All I ever wanted was to do was to make you proud of me, Pop. With what? Your male modeling? Prancing around in your underwear for, with your wiener hanging out for everyone to see? A beat. Larry breathes a heavy sigh and turns away from Derek. You're dead to me, boy. Derek looks at him, pouting sadly. 
You're more dead to me than your dead mother. Luke and Scrappy comfort their father. I just thank the Lord she didn't live to see her son as a mermaid. Derek looks at him defiantly. Merman. <laughs> Merman. Exterior of the mine shaft bar continues. Derek runs out of the front door, pa- panting heavily. He looks up at the night sky, full of countless stars and galaxies. Who am I? His cell phone rings. He pulls out the tiniest of cell phones, pulls up the antenna, and answers it. Hello, Derek. You hearing me? God? God? What the shit are you talking about? It's me, Mori. I hope you're finished touching your roots because Mugatu's making you an offer you won't believe. You gotta get your tush back here. Terry Mugatu, office day. Derek sits in an ornate chair in the middle of the room. Well, to tell you the truth, I was a little hesitant at first, Mr. Mugatu. Mugatu sits behind a large desk, fixated on Derek. I mean, you've never hired me before, and I've been around for... For ages and ages. You've been around a long, long time. I never wanted anything from you, and now you're retired. I can't have you, and it's funny how it switches like that. And now, the forbidden fruit must be tasted. A hand whips in, handing Mugatu a large Starbucks drink. He sips from it. Well, when Mari told, told me about what you were willing to do, I... Mugatu uh, spits the drink out and pours it all over Todd. Derek screams as Todd cries and holds his face. Todd, are you not aware that I get farty and bloated with a foamy latte? Todd does his best to recover. My mistake, Jacob. Your mistake, indeed. He hands his doctor to Todd. Todd and Mugatu to share a moment, making weird, borderline foreplay facial expressions at one another for a beat. Derek watches in confusion. The expressions continue a soft gasp, growls, and groans. Lugatu turns his attention back to Derek, a smile. Yes, Derek. What Maury said I was willing to do for you. He walks towards Derek. Let's get back to the reason that we're really here. He runs past Derek in his seat to a small table with a red cover on it. Without much further ado, I give you... He yanks the red cover off, revealing a beautiful miniature model of the plans for Derek's reading center. The Derek Zoolander Center for Kids Who Can't Read Good. Derek leans in extremely close to the model and examines it. Mugatu looks on from across the room. Todd comes up, still dripping with coffee and holding Mugatu's dog. He watches anxiously with Mugatu. Derek looks at him, angry. What is this? Mugatu and Todd look at him in confusion. Derek flips the model onto the floor, shattering it. A center for ants? What? They look at one another, Mugatu trying to process what's happening. How can we be expected to teach children to learn how to read if they can't even fit inside the building? Derek, it's just a small... I don't want to hear your excuses. The center has to be at least... Mugatu pauses and waits while Derek does a mental calculation. Three times bigger than this. Todd looks at Mugatu. Is this dude serious? Mugatu looks to Todd. He's absolutely right. Todd looks at him in confusion. Mugatu raises his eyebrows. I don't fucking know. <laughs> Thank you. I have a vision. And so do I. Let me show you mine. Terry Hallway Balls, Model Agency Day. Mori and Matilda walk the hall together. I can't help you, lady. I don't know nothing about Mugatu. But you've represented every male model in each of his campaigns. You must have some kind of relationship with him. Even if I did, why would I talk to you? Shame on you how you picked on Derek Zoolander in that story. He's a sweet simpleton who never heard a fly. Please don't change the subject, Mr. Ballstein. What about Mugatu's exploitation of sweatshop workers in Malaysia? Do you have an opinion on that? You want to hear an opinion with a nice... Uh, you, you can look, whatever. <laughs> Interior Mugatu Design Space Day. Mugatu and Derek walk into the space. Let me show you the future of fashion. Let me show you derelict. He stands in front of fashion pieces inspired by homelessness. It is fashion, a way of life inspired by the very homeless, the vagrants, the crack whores that make this wonderful city so unique. Images of homeless people digging in trash cans, pushing shopping carts full of junk, and tattered clothing and accessories with the words derelict plastered on them. And I want you, Derek, to be the face, the image, nay, the spirit of Derelict. Derek stares at him. 
It'll be your glorious comeback. Sounds cool. Derek, I would like you to meet Katinka Igaga Bogovanana. Katinka appears beside Derek and slaps a hand on his shoulder, clasping it. She'll be your day-to-day on the campaign. Who got to claps his hands? Let's get this model on his way. Exterior Pier 12 day, a car pulls down the alley to an abandoned looking building. The big show is in eight days, Derek. Like a caterpillar, you become the butterfly, so you must become derelict. So you want me to sleep in the gutter? The car parts? No, we're sending you to a very exclusive day spa. Katinka gets out of the car and walks up to a door of the rusted building. It has a very fake looking sign saying, Day Spa. So exclusive, no one knows about it. Our little secret, okay? Derek approaches Katinka. She looks up. She looks him up and down. Interior Time Magazine office day. Archie, young, nerdy, rushes through the wrestling office. A huge stack of files in his arms. He brings them to Matilda and sets them on her desk. Hey, Matilda, hey! You're muted, Aaron. (laughs) Hey, Arch, what's up? (laughs) He takes off his glasses and rubs his eyes. Nothing. I've just been up for a few days putting together these background articles on Mugatu you asked for. Wow. Very thorough, Archie. Thank you. It's weird. I mean, I couldn't get any info on him before 1995. It's like he just appeared out of the blue. Really? That's strange. Yeah. Matilda's desk phone rings. She answers. Matilda Jeffries. Keep pulling the sweater. Excuse me? Eventually the whole thing will unravel. You mean if you pull the thread, the whole thing will unravel? Now you're talking, sister. If you want to know more, go to Pier 12. Things aren't what they seem. The unseen speaker cracks his knuckles, his hand encased in a glass chamber. Matilda hangs up. Interior hallway day spa later. Katinka manhandles Derek down the hall, gripping his arm. Derek looks confused. What kind of a spa is this? It's designed for deep, deep relaxation. Come on, let's get you loosened up. Exterior Pier 12 day, another car pulls up and parks behind the car. Katinka and Derek showed up and Matilda parks the car and gets out. Interior, oh, yep. Interior massage room spa. Meanwhile, Derek gets massaged by scary looking masseuse, Olga. Good boy, good boy, good boy. Pier 12 continuous, Matilda cautiously approaches a side door into the building. She sneaks inside. An interior hallway day spa, Matilda sneaks carefully down the hall. Massage room spa, meanwhile, Olga slaps Derek's ass over and over. Matilda walks in. Oh. Olga looks at her. Matilda turns away. In oh, uh, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Derek shifts and recognizes him. Derek? He flips over on his back, a huge erection under the sheet. Derek is unfazed. Matilda, what are you doing here? <laughs> uh, I was... Uh, distracted by what's happening with the sheet. Uh, um, what, are, what are you doing here, Derek? I thought you quit the business. Haven't you heard? I'm the new face of Mugatu's Derelict campaign. Olga tries to massage, massage Derek's erection with a weird feather device. Derek's member has a life of its own, dodging Olga's attempt at massaging of it, whipping around under the sheet. Olga looks at it in confusion while trying to use the feather device on it. Ilda watches in confusion. Uh, what do you mean, Derek? You, you said Mugatu never hires you. Well, I guess he changed his mind. It's the only thing it's contained in the world. Ever. Katinka enters angry at Matilda's presence. What is this? She grabs Matilda's arm. Who are you? This is a private property. Nils! Security guard grabs Matilda. Exterior Pier 12. Matilda is literally thrown from the building. Katinka watching on. I suggest you and your Kmart Jacqueline Smith collection outfit stay in the hell away from Derek Zulanda. Interior spa later, Derek sits in a pod. Sexy spa workers help set up a wired head device to him. Katinka, also in a sexy spa worker outfit, stands across the room. How do you feel, Derek? Um, okay. When's the seaweed wrap? You shut up now. The spa workers walk away from his pod. 
I want you to relax and breathe deeply. An ugly looking DJ appears from behind the wall. Katinka looks at him and nods her head. He nods back and places a record under the needle of his player. Breathe deeply. The DJ plays the ne- places the needle on the record and the music begins to play. Relax, don't do it. Relax. I like this song. Of course you do. A wall separates and reveals a giant screen featuring Mugatu, the brainwashing video full of images of Mugatu. Mugatu dancing, soothing visuals, fashion, and anti-Prime Minister of Malaysia material. Hello, Derek. Derek looks at the monitor in confusion. Hello. Welcome to your relaxation time. Let this wonderful 80s classic soothe you. Just a nice, warm, happy time. Happy, happy, happy. <laughs> Nothing to worry about at all. Just relax. Mugatu appears on screen dressed like a little girl, complete with long curls and a big ass lollipop. Hey there, Derek. My name is Little Cletus. I'm just a regular kid who wants you to know the real truth about child labor laws, okay? Okay. They're silly and outdated. In the good old days, kids as young as five could work as they pleased, from textile factories to iron smelts. Yippee, hooray! Derek smiles. But today, the age-old right of children to work is under attack. From the Philippines to Bangladesh, in China, in India, and South America, too. Boo-hoo! Little Cletus turns back into regular, fashionable Mugatu. But you can help these children, Derek, by killing the Prime Minister of Malaysia. He is bad. What? Katinka pushes a button that gives Derek an immense electro cue. She electrocutes him. (laughs) You learn martial arts. We've got to demonstrate some fight moves. Prime Minister of Malaysia, bad. Martial arts, good. Derek shakes his head in his seat, overwhelmed by the video. Kill Naughty Man, kill Naughty Man, kill Naughty Man. Mugatu's dog shows up on screen. Obey my dog. An image of Derek in a blue jumpsuit comes up. He stands on a runway. On the runway, you have one objective. Derek looks around as cardboard cutouts of celebrities. Fred Durst, Lance Bass, Lil' Kim, and Al Gore pop up around him. Do not be distracted by the beautiful celebrities. Derek looks at the end of the runway as a fight dummy with the Prime Minister of Malaysia's picture attached to the head pops up. Do as you've been trained to do and kill the Prime Minister of Malaysia! Derek performs martial arts moves to make his way down the runway. Karate chop, bad man, awful man, in your little blue suit and your spiky black hair, kill! Derek performs a flip over the Prime Minister dummy, standing behind it. And you're a super hot ninja machine. Derek rips the head off the dummy, screaming at it. Interior bedroom apartment morning, Derek wakes up screaming. He sits up, hitting his head on the top bunk. He rolls off the bed and onto the ground, groaning. Bangs come from the front door. Derek, are you in there? Hold your horses. Derek, please open the door. Derek gets up from the floor. What a cuckoo dream. Derek. He stands up. Exterior apartment. Meanwhile, Matilda knocks on the door. She sighs. Derek opens it. What? Steps inside. Hey, are you okay? I've been trying to reach you for a week. A week? What? Are you having a rocket attack? I saw you this afternoon, dumbass. He rubs his head. That was last Friday. D-A-I-Y-E, okay? She sighs and shakes her head. Look, I think I know what this is about, and um, I'm very complimented, but not interested. What? I can't sleep with you. What are you talking about? Okay. If you just want to keep on the door. Hey, I don't want to sleep with you. I've been trying to tell you you've been missing for a week. Would you look at the date? She hands him a newspaper. Mugatu's derelict show is tomorrow night. He looks at the paper with furrowed brows. I don't care what the date says. 
He walks over to his answer machine and pushes the button. It beeps. You have 1,200 messages. It beeps again. Derek looks concerned. It is a bit of a beverage. Derek, what happened in that spa? I don't know. A little massage, some therapy. I mean, look, lady. You can't just come barging into someone's lofts wanting sex, then changing your mind, then telling them that you've been in a day spa for a week. You have been in a day spa for a week. So what? Do you understand that the world does not revolve around you or your, and your do whatever it takes? As many people's lives, so as long as you can have a name for yourself and an investigatory journalist, no matter how many friends you lose, or people you leave dead and bloodied along the way, just so long as you make a name for yourself as an investigatory journalist, no matter how many friends you lose, or people you leave dead and bloodied and dying all along the way. They stare at each other for a moment, thinking over what was just ranted. Derek, I told you I was sorry about that article. Enough. My head hurts. And if it, and if it indeed is what you do, what, in what day you claim it is, I have a pre-runway partly to attend, party to attend. Now, if you excuse me. He gestures to the open front door. She rolls her eyes and shakes her head before stepping out of the apartment. By the way. What? With your complexion, you really shouldn't be wearing your hair pulled back that tight. She touches her head. <laughs> what, you know, what are you talking about? Pull back the skin on your forehead, create tension which clogs the pores. That's why you have some light pattern dryness around your scalp. She tucks a hair behind her ear. Do you mind? She shakes her head. Derek has a look of concentration on his face, much like Blue Steel. And he whips his hand around doing a quick makeover to Matilda. Her hair is now done from her updo. He, nod he nods his head in approval. Cool. He steps back inside and slams the door shut, leaving a bewildered Matilda in the hallway. Exterior apartment moments later, Matilda exits the building. Katinka watches her leave from her car, a scowl on her face. I do not like Snoopy reporter with lack of fashion sense. Not one little bit. All right, guys, we're actually going to take a quick break. Yes, Maybe I have to yes. saying, where? No. Uh, I don't know. I'll have to look for it. <laughs> where were we? Oh. <laughs> uh, interior Time Magazine office night. Matilda sits at her computer. Archie appears. Hey, I just emailed you all those Nexus Lexus searches on the male models who've appeared in Mugatu campaigns. Matilda, Matilda types in the search engine, Mugatu models. It's pretty weird. It seems like all of Mr. Mugatu's models have a bad habit of dying young in freak accidents. The search brings up a number of news articles reporting model deaths. The top three headlines are bathtub blow dryer mishap ends life of model, model dies in freak gym accident, and model crushed to death in tragic orgy. Matilda looks closely at each picture. How did you... I need a picture in the articles and notice a very familiar face in all three. Katinka! Wait a second. What? Oh, shit. What's going on? I gotta go. She goes. Exterior <laughs> club later. A huge crowd has gathered around the club. An exclusive pre-runway party inside. Matilda speaks to the door person. I don't want to hang out, Okay. I just need to speak with Derek Zoolander, please. Interior party, meanwhile, close up on Winona Ryder, fawning over Derek. I just thought the way you handled losing that award to Hansel and then sort of laid low for a while and made your comeback, it was so courageous. Look, I got a pee, but I'd really like to continue talking about the conversation when I come back. Yeah. He gets up and leaves the booth. He walks past a crowd of partygoers. Everything cool there? It's great, Biff. Thank you. He continues walking. Paris Hilton catches his eye. Hey, Derek. You raw. Thanks, Paris. I appreciate that. Hey, Derek. Hey, Maurice. Say high five. Hey, my man.
What's, ha what's happening? Derek continues walking and spots Billy Zane. Derek, back on top, man. You rock. No, you rock. When are you going to drop Magnum on us, buddy? Not yet. Got to tame the beast before you can let it out of its cage. <laughs> Billy ponders on that. Derek continues walking. Hansel shoulder checks him as they walk past each other. Excuse me, brah. He continues walking. Derek stops. You're excused. Hansel stops and turns to him. The party music stops. Derek turns to Hansel. And I'm not your bra. Billy turns to the confrontation. Hansel scoffs. Whatever, dude. Whatever. Peace. God bless. Hansel turns and he... Guys, hold on. My, my uh, computer is like legit about... Um, excuse me, brah. He continues walking. Derek stops. You're Hansel stops and turns to him. The party music stops. Derek turns to Hansel. Billy turns to the confrontation. Hansel scuffs. Whatever, dude. <laughs> Whatever. Peace. God bless. Hansel turns, and he and his entourage start walking away. Hey, Hansel. Maybe next time. That was one strike too many. Hansel turns back to him. What's that? You got to stay with the campaign? Sorry you didn't book it. Oh, yeah? I've never even heard of it. Me and my friends have been too busy sunbathing off the southern coast of St. Barnes with spider monkeys for the past two weeks. Tripping on acid really changed our perspective on shit. So I guess, uh, I guess you can dare a lick. My balls, Capitan. Derek's jaw drops in disgusted shock. Hansel high-fives members of his entourage. Billy Zane hands his drink to his date. You hold this for me. He walks over and stands behind Derek, his mouth still agape. I can dare lick my own balls. Thank you very much. Partygoers gasp at the scene. Hansel looks at Derek. Derek shakes his head. You think you're cool for school? But I got a newsflash for you. Walter Cronkite. A long silence ensues. Everyone holds their breath, waiting for him to complete what his news flash is. You aren't. Hansel glares at him. They stare each other down. Who are you trying to get crazy with, S.A.? Don't you know I'm loco? Hey, I got a wacky idea. He steps up to Hansel, their nose to nose. What say we settle this on the runway? Han Solo. Hansel whips his hand around lazily, <laughs> adding in whooshing sound effects, acting like a gunslinger. <laughs> Derek watches in confusion for a few beats. Stop it. Hansel puts his hands down. Are you challenging me to a walk-off? Boo. Lander? Billy Zane walks up to Derek. Don't do this, Derek. Derek holds him as a hand, silencing him. Listen to your friend Billy Zane. He's a cool dude. He's trying to help you out. Oh, yeah? That's a walk-off challenge, my friend. Hansel whips out his Razor scooter from his pack and unfolds it in front of him. Ten minutes. Old members only warehouse. You ought to remember that. You're a dinosaur. Hansel wheels off his pose, his posse following him. Let's go. Open up. Derek and Billy Zane watch as he wheels off. Got some mad stories about this kid, man. He's limber. He's too limber. Put a cork in it, Zane. Derek runs off, following Hansel. Billy Zane turns to the party. It's a walk-off. It's a walk-off. The party rushes to witness the walk-off to end all walk-offs. Exterior club, moments later, Matilda is still arguing with the door person. This is urgent, ma'am. Do you have any... Derek brushes past Matilda, realizing who it is. Matilda chases after him. Derek... Derek. Derek walks with confidence, fueled by adrenaline. Derek. She catches up to him through the following crowd. Hey, Matilda. Uh, what is this? Where is everyone going? Good luck, Derek. Kick Hansel's ass. Here we go. I'll try. You want to see me? You want to see the real program modeling? The one they don't show you in the magazine. They're on the e-channel. Yeah, I guess. Derek, please, I have something really important to talk to you about. Not now, Matilda. 
hand sell out is about to have his hand sell ass in a tune with a platter with french fried potatoes. From an alley, the creepy DJ hides from the crowd watching their every move. He speaks on a cell phone. Jinka, yeah, thought you might want to know. Your boy Zoolander is rolling. It's a walk-off. Interior warehouse moments later, the crowd is bunched together, buzzing with the weight of the walk-off. Derek and Hansel stretch and prepare on the runway in the middle of the crowd. A DJ is set up, preparing the events. Soundtrack. Matilda tries to find a spot in the crowd to watch and wait for Derek to finish the challenge. Hansel finishes practice and lets out a sigh. All right. Who's going to call this sucker? If nobody has any objections. David fucking Bowie steps to the front, taking off his sunglasses. I believe I might be of service. Matilda raises her eyebrows. The crowd gasps in shock. Derek shrugs. David fucking Bowie brings the two of them together. Now, let's be a straight walk off. Those school rules. There's more walks. They can more duplicates and elaborates. Okay, boys. Let's go to work. Hansel stares at Derek. Age before beauty, goat cheese. He winks at him. Whatever. Derek turns and walks up to the start of the runway. Hansel steps off the runway. Right. He walks off the runway and sits in a throne at the end of it, ready to judge. Walk off montage. Derek performs his first walk. The crowd goes wild. He sits next to Tyson Beckford, who holds a metal bucket for him. Derek spits in it with a wine. With a wine. <laughs> Mimicking a boxer. Hansel follows with his walk. David fucking Bowie writes down the notes on his hand. Play school, baby. Derek and Hansel <laughs> go head to head with numerous walks. Hansel sits with his team, panting heavily. You gotta cut me. I can't see. I'm blind out there. Derek sits with Tyson Beckford. Tyson grabs the Evian moisturizer. Hansel's handler cuts his bangs. Hansel screams as the cutting happens. Okay, it's okay. More walks. Hansel, after his handler, cuts his bangs. Where am I? Where am I? It's okay. Matilda watches in fascination. Derek with Tyson Beckford. Kick it off. A desperate Hansel. I'm going monk. I gotta go monk. Prayer. Prayer. His team bows their heads with him. Pray to the great spirit. Hansel squawks like a bird. He makes several bizarre noises <gasps> with Derek, Tyson, Beckford, and Matilda look on in confused judgment. Hansel, seeming in a trance, gets up and takes the runway. Do it, Hansel. David fucking Bowie looks on in curiosity. <laughs> Hansel convulses and puts his hand down the front of his pants, moving it around quickly. People watch in disgust, confusion, and maybe a bit of arousal. Why is he sticking his hand in his pants? Tyson Beckford holds it no answers. Do it, Hansel. Hansel continues for a few seconds more before pulling out and holding up his intact underwear. He holds them above his head, victorious. The crowd goes nuts. He throws his underwear and hits Derek in the face. David fucking Bowie covers his mouth in shock. Hansel sits with his team. That's what I'm talking about. Tyson Beckford leans over to Derek. Yo, Derek, you're not a kid anymore. You could hurt yourself out there. Derek looks at Hansel, who shoots him a cocky look. You can do this, Tyson. Derek takes the runway. Everyone watches him in silence as he walks down. Derek says nothing, but thinks a couple things. Thank God I'm more underwear. Everyone watches in nervous anticipation as Derek slides his hand down the front of his pants and moves his hand around. He's going for it. Derek struggles for a few moments. He yanks his underwear up the front, but they're still attached to his body. The, ch the crowd groans in pains of sympathy or disappointment for Derek. David fucking Bowie slams the stage with his hand and proclaims his decision from between Derek's legs. What a fight. Hansel and his team celebrate. The crowd is going wild. Katinka enters the room while the celebrating goes on. Matilda spots her and gasps. She makes her way to a dazed Derek and grabs him. Derek, come on, come on. Katinka spots them and beckons her bodyguard. Come on. They make their way toward the stage. Exterior street later. Matilda and Derek drive down the street. What's going on? I think Katinka wants to kill you. Good. I deserve to die if I can't even beat him. Suck ass and walk off. Damn. <laughs> Damn. 
Eric, that's not true. I mean, the guy had to miraculously pull his underwear out of his butt just to beat you. A beat. Derek looks out the window. And all he had to do was turn left. She looks at him. What do you mean? Derek can't bring himself to look at her. I'm an Andy Turner. He looks at her. It's a problem I've had since I was a baby. I can't turn left. Derek, <laughs> that's a nothing to be ashamed of. I'm sure there are a lot of people out there who can't turn left. He thinks about it a moment. I mean, there have got to be some people out there just like you who can't turn turn left. Matilda's cell phone rings. She picks it up immediately. Hello? More answers from the city Donner Cemetery now. Wait, wait. Wait, who are you? The caller hangs up. She hangs up the phone. Who was that? I'm not sure. I have to get to St. Adonis Cemetery. Listen, I'm going to take you to my apartment, okay? You can stay there until I get back. Can I come with? She looks at him. I don't want to be alone tonight. <laughs> Exterior St. Adonis Cemetery later. Matilda's car pulls to the cemetery gate entrance. Moments later, Matilda and Derek walk among the tombstones, flashlight in hand. She reads a tombstone with a flashlight. Pedro? Samantha. A tombstone as a naked Greek male etched into it. The etching below the name reads 1965-1994. He lived. He loved. He posed. He died when he was 29. They move on to the next tombstone. In Correjo, derriere extraordinaire. Sculpture of an awesome butt is carved next to his title. Derek kneels down next to the tombstone. Below the name reads, 1963 to 1992, we will miss you and your muscular buttocks. 92 minus 63, none of them ever made it past 30. He stands up, the graveyard attendant, from the funeral standing, next, standing behind him now. I did. Derek yells and jumps back. He stands oh. next to Matilda. Who are you? It's not important. Are you a ghost? He looks at Derek. Let's take a walk. Exterior St. Adonis Cemetery moments later, the three walk among the tombstones. You think Zoolander's in trouble? He chuckles. Think again. What you've stumbled upon goes way deeper than you could ever fathom. The fashion industry has been up behind every major political assassination over the last 200 years. And behind every hit, a card-carrying male model. Matilda rolls her eyes. Okay, that's impossible. Oh, yeah? Listen and learn, sweetness. Abe Lincoln wanted to abolish slavery, right? But who do you think made powdered wigs and colored leg stockings worn by our country's early leaders? They think a moment. A look of realization crosses Derek's face. We've got to. Matilda closes her eyes. She's had it with this shit. J.P. Pruitt blinks slowly. Slaves, Derek. Oh. And without their free labor, prices on those items would have gone up tenfold. So the powers that hired John Wilkes Booth, the original model slash actor, to do the Lincoln Inn. Cut to John Wilkes Booth, looking a lot like James Marsden. Kills Abe Lincoln, gives a blue steel look. Back to cemetery. I'll go on. Dallas, Texas, 1963. Kennedy had just had put a trade embargo on Cuba, ostensibly halting the shipment of Cuban-manufactured uh, Santa Belt slacks. Incredibly popular item at the time. Lee Harvey Oswald was not a male model. You're goddamn right he wasn't. But those two lookers who capped Kennedy from the grassy knoll sure as shit were. Cut to two men with rifles high-fiving on the grassy knoll before turning to the camera and serving two helpings of blue steel to it. Back to cemetery. <laughs> well, what about you? How do you fit into all this? Oh, this nation was swept... Matilda drip, trips and drops her flashlight. She goes to retrieve it. I'll get it, ma'am. He walks over to it. He tries to grab it, but the glass case around his hand makes it impossible. Oh, oh. Derek stares intently at his hand as he struggles to get the flashlight. I, I can't get over. Wait a minute. 
He kneels next to him and grabs his arm. He lifts the glass case, case closer to his face. JP tries to take his hand away. No. Derek stares in astonishment. I know that hand. Close up on JP's hand, wriggling around in the case. It was in the fall 1973 Belova watch catalog. He looks at him. You're JP Prewitt, the world's greatest hand model. He looks back down at his hand. Once upon a time. But things change. Thanks to this homemade hyperbaric chamber. My sweet baby never did. He wriggles his fingers and laughs softly. Let's keep moving. He stands up and they continue walking. That's when I found out I was in line to assassinate Jimmy Carter. So, how'd you manage to escape? Because I'm a hand model, mama. He lifts up his case hand. A finger jockey. We don't think the same way as the face and body boys do. We're a different breed. So why male models? Think about it, Derek. Cut to Rufus working out in the apartment. Male models are genetically constructed to become assassins. Footage of male models performing amazing physical feats. They're in peak physical condition. Back to cemetery. They gain entry to the most secure places in the world. Cut to Derek cutting through a crowd and getting into a nightclub without issue. Back to cemetery. Most important of all, models don't think for themselves. They do as they're told. That is not true. Yes, it is, Derek. Okay. Derek nods, Matilda looks at him. <laughs> yeah. Think about any photo shoot you've ever been on. Derek thinks. Cut to a photo shoot. Derek is dressed in a monkey costume while a photographer screams at him. <laughs> You're a monkey, Derek. You're a monkey. Dance monkey in your little spangly shoes. Derek clashes together symbols and make, makes monkey noises. They throw a plastic <laughs> banana at him. He dodges it with his symbol. Match your symbols, Chimpy. Dance, Derek, dance. Back to cemetery. Derek looks at JP. You know, Pat, no. Good point. But if this has been going on for so long, Mugatu. He's just a punk ass errand boy working for an international syndicate of fashion designers. You do a little background check on your Mr. Mugatu, you'll find he sold his soul to the devil for a shot at the big time. But why male models? JP and Matilda look at him, exasperated. Are you, are you serious? I, I, I just told you. <laughs> right. You're a killing machine, Derek. They programmed you. But I won't do it. I won't kill anybody. It's not up to you. At the proper moment, they'll trigger you. Usually, using some kind of auditory or visual Pavlovian response mechanism. Adi, would I? And when it's over... He looks away. What? There's an after party? He looks at Matilda. Gunshots! One hits JP. <gasps> Matilda and Derek scream <laughs> at death. Derek, get down! <laughs> Tinka and the bodyguards shoot at them. You gotta get to Maury Ballstein's computer. He recorded everything in case they ever turned on him. Gunshots continue. Derek screams. <laughs> Derek, get a grip. Get a grip. <laughs> Good luck to you, Derek. He lifts his glass-encased hand to his face in a salute. I've always been a fan of blue steel, and I hear Magnum's gonna blow us all away. Come on. He gets up and runs. Get out of here. Hang in there, JP. He gets up, stepping on the glass chamber around JP's hand and shatters it. <laughs> <laughs> you freaking idiot! <laughs> and Matilda runs out of the cemetery. <laughs> street later, Matilda <laughs> Man, Man, that was close. I can't believe it's on it too. That bitch Katinka's not messing around. You're telling me for a second there, I thought someone was going to be reading a you Google G. <laughs> okay, all right. We need a place to hide. Derek, where's the last place anyone would ever expect to look for you? I don't know. Think. Okay, this is important. A bus horn sounds. Matilda gasps and steps on the brakes, slamming to a stop as a city bus crosses in front of her with an advertisement of Hansel. Oh, I hate Hansel. Hansel, Hansel, everywhere I look. Hansel, Hansel, Hansel. A beat. An idea forms between the two of them. Interior Hansel's loft later. Hansel opens the front door and looks at Derek and Matilda. Matilda clears her throat. 
Were you looking for a rematch? Derek won't even look at Hansel. Excuse me, Hansel? I don't really think there's any easy way to put this, so I'm just going to lay it out. Derek has been brainwashed to kill the Prime Minister of Malaysia. Hansel shrugs. And? And we need a place to hide until we can figure this whole thing out. Derek said that this would probably be the last place that anybody would look for him. A moment. Yeah, you're cool to hide here. But first, me and him got to straighten some shit out. Derek looks at him uncomfortably. Why you been acting so messed up towards me? Why you been acting so messed up towards me? Hansel looks down at the ground, Derek and Hansel, uncomfortably confronting their issues with one another. He takes a moment. Well, you go first. I don't know. Maybe I felt a little, like, a little bright or something because your career is just kind of blossoming and might kind of wind down a little bit. And I felt like, this guy's really hurting me. And it hurt. Matilda looks at Hansel with confusion. And I felt like when you told me to dare lift my balls, that really hurt. Maybe I was scared, man. You're Derek Zoolander. Derek looks at him. Yeah, you're Derek Zoolander. You know what it's like to be another model and to be in Derek Zoolander's shadow? He scoffs. Derek and Matilda look at each other. He looks back to Hansel. You want to hear something crazy? Derek looks at him, tilting his head in curiosity. Your work in the Winter 95 International Men's Catalog made me want to be a model. Derek looks at him in surprise. I freaking worship you, man. I'm sorry, I was whack. I was whack. I was whack. They hug it out. Interior of Hansel's loft later, Hansel leads Matilda and Derek into his main loft area, a big smile on his face. So welcome to Shez Hansel. In the large room is a half pipe, skaters performing on it, and tons of groupies and entourage members just hanging out around the loft. You're welcome to hide out here as long as you want. Well, there isn't much time. The show's tomorrow night. We have to figure out a plan by then. I'll round up the troops here. Hansel addresses the room. Hey, what's up, y'all? This is Derek and Matilda. Derek, you know Natini and Chloe? The two girls wave. We got Buzzy Sullivan, big wave surfer from Mavericks. Buzzy looks up and gives a hang loose signal. Hey, bro. Oh, and this fantastic band is Little Kings that I met when I was ice sailing in Finland. A group of four dwarves musicians <laughs> wave to them. That's my Sherpa, Lapsang. A man walks by with a goat. So, hey, everybody, listen up for a second. All attention is turned to Hansel for his announcement. Derek and Matilda are hiding because some dudes brainwashed Derek to off the Prime, Prime Minister of Micronesia. Oh, oh, Malaysia. Right. So they're going to be hiding here for a little while. Let's show them a good time. The group shouts in agreement. All right, come on over here. He leads Derek and Matilda. Oh, hey, Anwi, can you do me a favor? A beautiful girl walks up to him. Will you get me some of that tea that me and Lobstang got when we were free climbing the Malaysian ruins? The Mayan she nods ruins? and walks off. Interior tea room, Hansel's laugh later. Matilda, Derek, and Hansel hang out, drinking their tea and relaxing to sitar music. Matilda sips her tea and lets out a sharp, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is a really strong tea. No, it's just right. Trust me. What with all the intrigue you guys have been dealing with? You know, Matilda, I'm a little surprised you're so worried about d Rock. She shrugs. From the article I read, it seems like you really don't care too much about guys in our line of work. Hmm. Why do you hate modern Matilda? Honestly? Yes. I think they're vain, stupid, and incredibly self-centered. I totally agree with you. She looks at him in surprise. But how do you feel about male models? Derek and Hansel laugh. They high five. (laughs) Matilda scuffs and laughs herself. No, no, okay, okay. But seriously, Matil. Is it right if I call you Matil? She doesn't know how to process or answer this request. What's the deal, Yo-Yo? You're not telling us the whole story. There's something else, isn't there? You can't even read the comment Yeah. Derek nods, Matilda sits up. I, I can't. <laughs>
completely lost it. How? That's the bottom of 76. Oh, okay. Then I'm going to tell you the truth. When I was in seventh grade, I was the fat kid in my class. Ew. <laughs> he looks at him in disgust. Hansel scuffs. All right, oh. forget it. No, no, no. Dude, 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 be cool tonight. Come on. I'm sorry. Please, go ahead. My mistake. I was the one that all the pretty girls used to make fun of. It was an awkward phase. She says. Anyway, every day after school, I would come home and, you know, I'd flip through the pages of my mom's Vogue and Glamour. And I'd just, I'd look at all these women, these perfect, beautiful, just unbelievable, skinny women. I just couldn't, oh, I couldn't understand why I didn't look like them. I just didn't get it. So, so I became. What? Olimic. A beat. You can read mine. Hansel looks awestruck. She looks at both of them in disbelief. It's <laughs> when you throw up after every meal. She scoffs in frustration. See, you know what? This is exactly what you models do to people. You make them feel bad about themselves. Hansel and Derek laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Matilda, Matilda. They laugh hysterically. <laughs> so what? I throw up after lots of meals. So do I. It's a great way to lose pounds after a show or before a show. Are you guys insane? Do you <laughs> understand? It's a disease. Wow. How'd that affect with you guys? Did they not get busy? Did they not want to get busy with you? Good point. Oh, okay. You know what? I'm not going to sit here with both of you and discuss my sex life or uh, lack thereof. Oh. Oh, you mean like, like you, like you... You haven't really done it? You haven't done it? Done it in a while. Yeah. Okay. What's a while? Like, like eight she, days? She shakes her head. More? Matilda sighs. Oh. Try a couple years. Oh, both men grounded oh. in How do you live? How do you live? Seriously, do you like service yourself 10 times a day? <laughs> no, end of discussion. Easy. Okay, hold on. You know what? I'm, I'm not comfortable talking. This is easy, easy, easy. This is an emotional day for all of us. A beat. I think we should get me. <laughs> what? <laughs> Don't ask the questions. Just give in to the power of the team. They clink their glasses together. A threesome ensues. Woohoo! Interior kitchen, Hansel's lot. Oh, that's it? Okay. Hansel takes the bread out of the and Derek slips. <laughs> uh, oh, is it my turn? Sorry. Uh, so I'm rappelling down Mount Vesuvius when suddenly I slip and I start to fall. I, I mean, I'm about to die. Hot bread, Zeke. Zeke rushes and puts a platter under the bread. Just falling. I'll never forget the terror. When suddenly I remember, holy shit, Hansel. Haven't you been smoking peyote for six straight days? And couldn't some of this maybe be in your mind? And? It was. I was totally fine. I've never even been to Mount Vesuvius. Olaf, one of the musicians, eats at the table. Cool story, Hansel. <laughs> Thanks, Olaf. He turns his attention back to Derek. Dude, how dope was last night? I mean, the soil, dirt was flying. You couldn't see anything. It was like, oh, who's that? Who's this? I think I'm falling for Matilda, Hansel. Dude, I wasn't gonna say anything, but it was like crazy energy flying back and forth between you guys. It was like, whoa, look out. There was a moment last night when she was sandwiched between the two <laughs> Finnish dwarves and the Mori tribesmen. Hansel oh, yeah. remembers fondly. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Where I thought, wow, I could really spend the rest of my life with this woman. Really? What do you call that? I think you call that love, D-Bone. Matilda <laughs> enters the room. Hey. 
Hey. <laughs> so, uh, what time is it? Almost five. What? Hey, guys, that show is in three hours. Derek is dead unless we get that evidence. Do you guys... Whoa, whoa, easy. How about good afternoon, Derek and Hansel? Thank you for the freak fest last night. <laughs> Derek's tiny cell phone rings. He answers. Hello? Oh, hi, Katinka. Uh, no. I just had a really late party, la a party night last night. Derek, hang up the phone now. Where am I? Hang up the phone. I have to go, but I'll see you at 7. Okay, bye. <laughs> Derek, I thought I told you to turn your phone off. Turn off my phone? Ooh. <laughs> turn off my phone? <laughs> yeah. Earth to Matilda, this phone is as much as part of me as... Now, you know what? Can we just cut it out with all the Earth 2s, please? We're not actually saying this is Earth calling you, Matilda. <laughs> yeah, no. I get that. I understand you don't literally mean. Uh, no, I don't think you do. Listen, it's not like we think that we're actually in control, a control tower trying to reach out our space aliens or something, okay? Hansel laughs, pretending <laughs> like he's trying to communicate with aliens. Hello, hello. He laughs. Derek laughs. <laughs> oh, snap. <laughs> a joke. Derek high fives him. Okay. <laughs> we fucking missed. That was... <laughs> okay, you know what? Instead of doing that, I'm going to try to figure out a way into Maury's before Derek assassinates a world leader. She exits the area. Derek and Hansel look at each other with furrowed brows. Wait a minute. She turns to him. I might just have an idea. She looks at him in surprise. They'll be looking for us at Mari's, right? But they won't be looking for not us. <laughs> Derek, huh? what, what are you talking about? He turns to Hansel. Sure, I mean, just for touch-ups or whatever. He hands his handheld case to Derek, who flips it open. What are you going to do with that? Derek flips it closed. That'll do. He turns to Matilda. Early in my career, I used to do my own makeup styling and tailoring. If I can create a basic disguise for us, we may just be able to sneak into Mari's undetected. Hansel puts his arm around Derek. You is talking loco, and I like it. Interior hallway, Balls Models Agency. Later, <laughs> two janitors walk down the hall. The disguises work. They don't look anything like Hansel or Derek. Dereleaked fashion show. Meanwhile, guests enter the show through a storm gate grate into the ground. Interior dereleaked fashion show. Continuous guests go down long fire escape like stairs. Welcome to Dereleaked. The creepy DJ spins tunes while the guests file in and find their seats around the runway. Interior Morty's office later. One of the janitors picks up a walkie-talkie Hansel's voice. Hansel oh. calling Matil. Hansel calling Matil. We have entry. Repeat. We have entry. Intercut to Time Magazine office. Matilda's at her desk. She answers the walkie call. Hey, guys, I hear you. Now, once you get the info, I want you to email it to my office. Then I'll download the files, we'll rendezvous, and take the information to the police. Maury's office. We hear you loud and clear. Derek takes the walkie from Hansel. Listen, Matil, I've been thinking a lot about the bulimia thing. And I want you to know that I understand where you're coming from. I, I feel really bad. <laughs> Good looking people like us made you throw up and feel bad about yourself. For serious. <laughs> he pouts in a blue steel way. <laughs> Thanks, Derek. Now hurry up. Back to Matilda's okay. office. Archie approaches, approaches with a file. And a cantaloupe. <laughs> and a cantaloupe. Hey, I finally got the results on the name check you asked for. Jacoba Mugatu, or should I say Jacob Moogberg? <laughs> what? After Frankie. Frankie folks gave him the. Oh, I'm sorry. 
I skipped way ahead. Yeah, he changed his name when he went into the fashion business. Apparently, the guy was the original guitar synth player for that band, Frankie Goes to Hollywood. But he got kicked out before they hit it big with that song, Relax. She looks down at a cheesy, less fashionable photo of Mugatu holding a keyboard guitar. After Frankie folks gave him the heave-ho, he held a series of odd jobs until... Pulls out another picture. Get this. He invented the... Piano key necktie in 1985. Another cheesy picture of Mugatu showing off the piano key necktie. This guy's been a fashion designer ever since. Interior Mori's office, meanwhile, Hansel and Derek wipe their makeup off. They look at the desk. First obstacle. They stare at Mori's computer. You ever use one of these? I don't think so. They look at each other. Interior. Derelict fashion show, meanwhile, a dressed up Mugatu carrying his dog moves throughout the bustling backstage area while models and tailors alike are hard at work perfecting the show looks. Watch out, watch, fix that ham, Jason. Please, I need Katinka. She enters with her bodyguards. He's not here yet, Jacobin. That little toad face better show up. He will show. Good, because I'm a hot little potato right now. He walks away. Interior Mori's office, meanwhile, Hansel and Derek still try to figure out the computer. There must be an on button somewhere. They knock on the computer. Did you press the Apple thing? (laughs) Hansel bangs on the computer. Both of them progressively get more and more frustrated, banging on the computer, slapping the monitor, tapping the screen. They both figure out the computer. Hansel picks a bone and goes to smash the computer. Derek grabs his hand. Wait, Hansel. He looks at him. The mountains are cool. They were no better than the machine. Hansel snaps out of it. It's almost seven. I gotta go. He turns to leave. No, Derek. Derek, wait. He grabs him and Derek turns back. If you go, they'll make you kill that Eurasian dude. I don't care. I've never been late for a show in my life. I don't care, I'm starting now. Damn it, you're right. He holds up his tiny cell phone. Oh, no. Ah, man. Hansel takes it from him. Let's just say, I'll hold on to it until you get back. Go, go. Derek leaves, interior main room, the mineshaft bar later. Coverage of the derelict fashion show plays on the bar television. Larry sits at the bar where he's served a beer, his attention drawn to the screen as Steve speaks. (laughs) (laughs) We're here live at the derelict show where controversial designer Jacobin Mugatu has extended the olive branch to Malaysian Prime Minister Hassan, making him the guest of honor of tonight's show. Prime Minister Hassan has shown sitting in a spot at the show. And starring in that show, veteran supermodel Derek Zoolander. Interior Mori's office later, a frustrated Hansel sits with the computer. Matilda comes through over the walkie. Oh, uh, what's happening? Did you find the files? Hansel answers the call. (laughs) Matilda, we've got problems. Derek's already left for the show. No, no, he can't. We don't even know what the trigger is. He just went running out of here. I couldn't stop him. I'll call him on his phone. He doesn't have it. <laughs> what? Yeah, he doesn't have it. <laughs> what, what are you talking about? He always has it. No, he gave it to me. Okay, did you find the files? I don't even know what they look, what do they look like? They're in the computer. They're in the computer? <laughs> yeah, they're Definitely in there. I just don't know how he labeled them. A look of realization comes over his face. I got it. You gotta figure it out. We're running out of time, Hansel. You gotta find them and meet me at the show. Roger. He sets the walkie down and stares at the computer. In the computer. It's so simple. Interior Time Magazine office moments later, Matilda turns back to her desk. Archie comes in with a snack. Hey, I just came up with a couple of cantaloupe halves. Have some pie cheese if you're hungry. <laughs> Not the right time, Arch. I need to figure out this trigger before Derek kills the Malaysian Prime Minister. 
Oh, uh, seem a little tense. I was trying to help you relax. <laughs> relax? That's the last thing I need to do right now is relax. He's struck with the realization. That's it. Interior derelict fashion show. Meanwhile, Todd descends set of stairs into the backstage area. Let's go, people. Let's go. Vagrants and whores, you're wanted in makeup. Runaways and street hustlers, you're next. Derek gets his makeup done. Katinka overseeing him. You had us worried, Derek. Everything's cool. I met you for saying for the show. Good. Just remember, relax. She smiles. Two minutes, Derek. Oh, there he is. Derek turns to the voice. Maury stands there. It's a silver and gray track, track suit. I just want to wish you a, a good luck. Do what you mean, goodbye. What are you talking about? Derek gets up and walks over to Maury. I knew it was you, Maury. I knew it was you. I didn't break my heart. Derek, I, 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 I don't know what you're talking. Derek doesn't break eye contact with him a beat. Derek, I'm, I'm sorry. In the main room, Matilda walks in the crowd room, looking for Hansel or Derek. Katinka grabs her. Matilda gasps. Glad you could join us, Kmart. She holds a gun to Matilda's back. Lucky for you, there is no dress code. The creepy DJ shifts the music a recording of Mugatu plays. I am vile spew of the wretched masses. I am really, really dirty. I am derelict. Models begin walking the runway. Morty watches from a corner of the room. Mugatu steps up behind him, matching dog in tow. You'll make me sick to my stomach, Chaco. It'll all be over soon. Derek Zoolander will be dead, and you'll be fine. You always are. Backstage, Todd leads Derek to the runway entrance. Come on, Derek. You're on. Morty leaves. Mugatu watches him. I can like Derek. Derek makes his way up to the runway. Derek walks onto the runway. Matilda tries to make her way to him. The DJ is poised, ready for his cue. The Malaysian Prime Minister is very impressed with Derek's look. Derek po poses at the start of the runway. Mugatu looks to the DJ booth. The DJ reaches for the relax record. Matilda breaks away from Katinka and sh shouts out to Derek. He, look, he looks at her. The DJ prepares the record. It's relax. <laughs> I'm fine. I've done this a thousand times. He gives her a reassuring nod. The DJ places the record on the player. <laughs> the trigger. It's real. Katinka grabs her and punches her in the stomach. The DJ lowers the needle on the record. The song plays. As the music starts, Derek can hear Mugatu's voice in his head. Concentrate, dear elite. He sees the forewarned celebrities of Fred Durst, Lance Bass, Lil' Kim, and Al Gore. Do not be distracted by the beautiful celebrities. Celebrities, do what you've been trained to do and kill the Prime Minister of Malaysia. Derek completes numerous impressive martial arts moves down the runway, impressing the audience, including the Prime Minister, Mugatu and Todd Watch. Just do it already. Hansel slides down from the ceiling, computer in tow. Into the DJ booth, he punches the DJ, he switches the song, and Derek snaps out of it. D-Bone, I got your back. What? Derek turns and makes his way towards the beginning of the runway. The Prime Minister applauds him in delight. It's that damn Hansel. He's so hot right now. The DJ flips up and dance fights with Hansel in the booth. Pop it and locking, fool. They're break dance fighting. <laughs> the DJ punches Hansel in the stomach and switches the song back to relax. Setting Derek back off. Derek backflips down the runway. Hansel punches the DJ and turns off the song. Derek back to normal. Hansel and the DJ continue to dance and physically fight. The DJ switches it back to relax. Derek triggered again. Derek runs to the Prime Minister and flips in the air over him. Hansel desperately crawls his way to the music power cord. The Prime Minister's delight quickly turns to fear. D Derek puts his hand around the Prime Minister's neck and jaw and about to do the unthinkable when Hansel pulls the plug. The music stops completely. Matilda lets out a gasp of relief. The Prime Minister's bodyguards carry Derek away. 
Woo! Eric Zoolander just tried to kill the president of Malaysia. Hansel knocks out the DJ. That's bullshit. Listen up, everyone. Mugatu's a dick. Mugatu Ooh. gasps. He tried to brainwash Derek to kill the claymation dude. Mugatu hands his dog to Todd and runs out the runway. That's a lie. Zoolander snapped because he's over the hill. He knew his career was over and he couldn't face it. No way, compadre. He lifts up Moray's computer monitor. We got 30 years worth of files right here in this computer. They're going to bring you down. He lifts it over his head. Oh, no. Ah, uh, down. He chucks the monitor to the floor below, shattering it. The crowd gasps. Where'd all the files go? Atinka flips up into the runway. She points her gun at Derek. Ha! I'm taking you out. Hansel holds up his yo-yo. Yo! He, she looks at him. Taste my pain, bitch! <laughs> throws the yo-yo. It wraps around her gun and, and her hand. He yanks the yo-yo back, snatching the gun away from her. She gasps. Yay! Matilda kicks Katinka's legs out from under her. Deal with that! Matilda flips her over and holds Katinka's gun to her. You don't have the guts, Kmart. No, bro. Wanna bet? And by the <laughs> way, you are wrong about my outfit. <laughs> it's the Cheryl Ladd collection, and I got it at J.C. Penny on sale. Boom! She punches Kating in the face, causing her lip to bleed. Oh. She licks the blood away. She seems to have liked that a little too much. Mori makes his way onto the runway. Jigs up, Mugatu. Everything they're saying is true. I've been on it for 30 years. What are you doing, Ballstein? I'm done, Jacko. I got a prostate the size of a honeydew, and I had a full of bad memories. It's time to set things straight. You have no evidence. Hand stupid destroyed everything. I got two words for you. Sugar. Zip disk. <laughs> my, dad, my dad in Long Island. I can have that evidence here in 20 minutes. That a boy, Murray. Hold on a second. Plugs in a headphone attached to his cell. I'm afraid of the radiation. <laughs> Sheila, honey, it's me. Listen, I need you to bring that zip desk in the den down to the fashion show. I don't care what the traffic is like. Take the goddamn service road and get off before the bridge. So put it in one of those Tupperware containers and I'll heat it up in the microwave when I get home. For Christ's sake, it's a casserole, Sheila. I'll stay. Shut up. Enough already, Ballstein. Who cares about Derek Zoolander anyway? The man has only one look, for Christ's sake. Blue Steel, Ferrari, La Tigre, they're all the same face. The crowd gasps in disbelief. Doesn't anyone notice this? I feel like I'm taking crazy pills. I invented the piano key necktie. I invented it. Todd nods in support from the wings. What have you done, Derek? Nothing. You've done nothing. Nothing. And I will be a monkey's uncle if I have you ruin this for me. Because you will, can't get the job done, then I will. Die, you wage-hiking scum. He pulls an embellishment of his outfit, an M-shaped ninja star. The bodyguards holding Derek rush to the Prime Minister. Mugatu gears up to throw his M. Derek boils in anger. Eric, you... One look? Mugatu. Mugatu in slow motion is about to throw his weapon. One look. I don't think so. Mugatu throws the M down the runway to the Prime Minister. Derek looks, runs to the runway and steps in front of the Prime Minister. He turns left and delivers magnum. The look stunning friends and enemies alike. There it is. Magna. Holy moly. Yeah, baby, that's what I've been waiting for. <laughs> Dear God, it's beautiful. <laughs> Matilda and Katinka look in awe. Derek's look stops the M ninja star in its tracks. It falls to the ground. The audience goes wild. Hansel cheers. Security tackles Mugatu to the ground. Ah. Larry celebrates his son in the dive bar. That's my kid. That's my son. Derek cheers. Matilda gets up and runs to him. Derek. She hugs him. I love that kid. Dumb as a stump, but I love him. Oh, Derek, you did it. That was amazing. I know. I turned left. Yeah. 
That too. <laughs> but you saved them. The Prime Minister of Malaysia. Oh, right. Cool. The Prime Minister approaches Derek. Thank you, Derek Zoolander, for saving my life. On behalf of the world of fashion, you're welcome, Mr. Prime Rib of Propatia. <laughs> they bow to one another. Derek turns to Matilda and they share a passionate kiss. They separate. Derek's show, Derek's show makeup all over Matilda's face. Cut to exterior Zoolander center day. Derek pops into frame. Hi, I'm former male supermodel Derek Zoolander. And here at the Derek Zoolander Center for Kids Who Can't Read Good and Who Want to Learn to Do other, good, other Stuff Good Too, we teach students of all ages everything they need to know about to learn to be a professional model and a professional human being. Our diverse faculty includes business management, teacher and former model agent, Mari Balstein. Mari teaches a class of students, a designer, Got your nuts in a vice, offering you 10 million plus 3% of every pair of underwear sold. What are you gonna do? The class responds. Screw up! Do that. Hold out, Hold out for more. more. That's what I'm talking about. Happy students give thumbs up. Derek walks to the entrance with the students. So join now because at the Derek Zoolander Center for Kids Who Can't Read Good and Want to Learn to Do Other, other Stuff Good too, we teach you that there's more to life than just being really, really, really good looking. Right, kids? Right. And cut. The director walks up to Derek. Looks great, I think we got it. All right, Mitch, thanks. All right, everybody, it's a wrap. Hey, Hansel. Hansel leads a group of students all wearing bungee jumping gear. Hey, D-Rock, I'm gonna take these kids over to the George Washington Bridge to give them a little lesson in base jumping. I'll catch you in the teacher's lounge later on. All right. All, All right, right, guys. Last one of the helicopters, the rotten egg. Let's go. They run off. Hey, Matilda. Matilda holds a little baby Zoolander. There's Daddy. <laughs> hey. Hi. He kisses her. How's Derek Jr.? He's great. Guess what? He made his first look today. Really? You want to show daddy your look, Derek Jr.? Derek looks in anticipation. Derek Jr. gives a mini blue steel look. Matilda gasps excitedly. Wow. Hey, you guys want to you guys want to hang out for story hour? <laughs> Great. Yeah. Let's go. Go <laughs> found it with a group of kids ready for story time. Oh man. Oh man. Hey kids, you wanna hear a story? The kids cheer. The fountain's water source comes from a bronze statue depicting Rufus, Mikus, and Brent playing with the gas pump hoses. Their faces sheer joy looking on at the life that Derek has built. Wake me up before you go. Gotta <laughs> me hanging on a oh my something else. Yeah. 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 Great job, everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. No team. I almost passed great. out. I was laughing so hard. <laughs> you guys, it's so good. Thank you for joining us for the reading. <laughs>